The Quran says, you are busy piling up, calculating, developing your careers, your money, your occupation, your wealth, <coughs> until you visit the graves. Think about it. When was the last time that you went to a funeral? Was it your mother? Was it your father? Was it your grandfather? Was it your uncle? Was it your cousin? Was it your friend? Was it your wife? Was it your husband? The last time that you visited the grave, when you went to a funeral and you saw that person whom you love that was laughing, crying, Live, boasting, wealthy, educated, denying, arrogant, whatever they were. What was the demeanor of the people when you walked in that funeral home? When that person was stretched out in their last suit? What was the demeanor? Were the people cracking jokes? Were they dancing? Were they clapping and singing songs? No. Silence. Trauma. Why? Because every person that walked in that room, seeing that person stretched out, the first thing they thought about was not the person. The first thing they thought about was that one day, this will be me. dunya as if we are always going to remain here. Many of us, we don't think about our moment of death. Many of us, we live as though this is where we are going to remain. As though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us life forever and we are going to remain on this dunya for all time. And there is not a single person here who knows what his moment of death is going to be like. The first thing that happens to this person when he is on his deathbed, his family are sitting all around him. His loved ones are making dua for him. And this may be us. The angel of death descends upon this person. The angel of death and his deputies, they come and they have black faces. And this is a creation which you have never seen before in your life. And at that moment, you are surrounded by your family, but you feel so alone. Because only you can see these angels. And you are trying to say to your family, help me, help me, but they can't help you. And so these angels, they descend and they come with a foul smell. And they come with a rough sackcloth from hellfire. And you are sitting there and you want to scream, but your voice is not coming out. And the angel of death comes and he sits at your head. And then he says, oh evil soul, come out to the anger of Allah and His punishment. And so your soul, it hides within your body because it doesn't want to come out. So your soul, it hides within your body. And then the angels, they beat that person and they pull his soul. And the Prophet wasallam he said, his soul is removed like a many hooked iron skewer. So imagine some wet wool and the way you pull a, a thorny branch through that, the way it rips and it tears at that wool. And that's the way it tears at your, your veins and your muscles. And the person is in intense pain. And then they ascend to the first heaven. And they knock on the doors of the heaven. And it is asked, who is it? And the angels who are carrying your soul, they call you by the worst names that you were known by on this dunya. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders that the angels do not open the doors of that first heaven. And that person's soul is dropped from the first heaven to his grave. And we fast forward now to the people have buried him and he can hear their footsteps. You're in your grave and you can hear your family's footsteps as they leave you. 
These people who you turned to in the dunya when you had some distress, when you needed some advice or some help, they bury you and then they leave. And this person, this evil soul, he is screaming, don't leave me. Where are you going? Why are you leaving me alone? And so, the people they leave. And then, in a sudden, he sees in the distance, two angels, two very scary angels approaching him. They are called Munkar and Nakir, and they are black and they are blue. So imagine you've never seen this, and you see them approaching you. But do you have anywhere to run? Do you have anywhere to hide? Do you have anything that you can protect yourself with? So they sit that person up in his grave. And then they ask him three questions, but these angels are rough. They're not going to ask you in a polite way. So the first question, who is your Lord? And this person, he didn't learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He didn't learn about shirk. He just lived his life. He didn't care. He was too busy chasing the dunya. So he's going to say, oh, oh, I don't know. Then they are going to say, what was your religion? And this person, he was too busy. He came on a Friday and he prayed his Jumu'ah, but after that he didn't pray. He prayed his Eid Salah, but after that he didn't pray. He didn't know his religion. He didn't care about his religion. So he's going to say, I don't know. Then the third, who was this man that was sent to you? He's going to say, I don't know. I heard the people, the masjid where I went to, the people used to say such and such, but I can't remember now. And then a voice calls out. The angels are told to furnish his grave with the furnishings of Jahannam. كل نفس ذائقة الموت كل نفس ذائقة الموت ثم إلينا ترجعون والذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات لنبوئنهم من الجنة غرفا غرفا تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها نعم أجر العاملين نعم أجر العاملين الذين صبروا الذين صبروا وعلى ربهم يتوكلون